next. Uh, we'll get started with questions. Evan Bland. Hey, well, uh, I'm just kind of curious, just real generally speaking, uh, what's something about this team that uh, you still have yet to learn or that, that we still have yet to learn halfway through this season? Wow, that's a that's a good that's a, a stumper right there. I, I don't know. I don't something that you haven't learned. Um, yeah, that's I don't know. I don't know how to answer that one. I think we the, the, the team that you've seen is the team that we've seen uh, since they stepped foot on campus, honestly. Um, the, the, the solid defense, the energy that they play with, uh, the passion, uh, the strike throwing on the mound. I mean, those are those are all things that, that we've seen um, since September, honestly, when we started fall practice. And um, I think that's a good thing. I think that's a good sign where what you see is what you get with the team. It's not necessarily that there's something being held back or, um, you know, we're, we, we just haven't quite done this yet. I think, honestly, with, the, with this team um, – they just show up every day and they're the same, they're the same team. So I, I think that's a good quality to have, you know, to be consistent. Um, you know, we've had the same starting rotation all year. Um, those are guys that we thought would probably be in our rotation. Um, you know, the guys have stepped up in the bullpen are guys that we thought would be pretty good bullpen arms for us. And uh, like I said, now we've kind of settled on the top six in the order for the most part. Um, again, you kind of hope to have that type of consistency with a team where, you don't necessarily say, man, just wait until this starts happening. I think with this group, um, they've been the same team ever since we started back in September. Now, certainly we've gotten better in some areas um, and we've come a long way in others. But um, I just, again, I think it's just a consistent group of guys that show up and are ready to compete every day. How common is that in your coaching experience that a team has been what it is from the beginning and has kind of stayed that way? Very uncommon. I mean, that, that's something that just never happens, honestly, um, where you just – it takes guys a, a while to kind of get going at times, whether it be the freshmen. But honestly, with this group of freshmen that we've had that have contributed this year, they've shown the ability to do the, these type of things, uh, honestly, since day one. Um, and with our veterans, we knew what we were getting with all those guys. Um, even though we didn't have designated captains at the beginning of the fall, it was very clear of who our team leaders were. Um, you know, I think everybody could kind of point to, you know, who the guys they thought would be uh, rotation type guys for us. So it just doesn't, it doesn't happen very often where you feel like you've kind of got a pretty good idea, especially when you've got as many newcomers as you have. You, you, sometimes it takes a while to mesh, you know, the the new faces with the with the guys that have been been here before. But again, I, I think just the testament of our our older players and our leaders where they just, hey, let's go, let's do this. Let's, we're all in this together. This is what we're trying to get accomplished. And it doesn't matter how old you are, uh, where you come from, um, what your experience level is. Uh, we're all here to just get the job done. Chris Bassnett. Hey, well, for the guys that, that maybe don't play as much or, or haven't played a lot at all this year, how do, you, how do you keep them engaged? How do you keep them ready? You know, and I know you talk about next man up and things like that but how do you keep those guys ready you know to, to to stay in it and stay with with the rest of the guys that are playing a lot yeah it does make it difficult this year with with kind of how everything played out usually you use the first two or three weeks of non-conference play to get a feel for your team and get some guys uh maybe their first collegiate um at bats or innings um and then the midweek games are obviously big for that too so yeah not having that stuff uh you know, we, we just really had to pare it down a lot earlier, honestly. And I alluded to that before the season started. It, we just didn't really have the opportunity to, you know, put a guy on the mound that we just weren't quite sure if he's going to throw strikes or uh, to put a guy in a, in a situation in a game where we weren't quite sure if he knew the signs or if he knew, you know, exactly the situation on the bases and that type of stuff. So we try to get those things done in the midweek uh, with scrimmages. Um, we had one yesterday. We've had one each week since the season started. Uh, and those are important. I mean, those are development pieces right there where we've got, I mean, I was looking at our stats the other day from the midweek stuff. I mean, we have guys that have 25 or 30 at bats in the, those type situations. So we're at least getting some of that done. Um, and and with, the, with the guys on the mound, I mean, we've seen some guys, Ethan Bradford got a chance to throw this past weekend based on what he had done on Tuesdays. Um, so 
using those those chances there on the midweek, um, even if it's just an inner squad situation to get guys chances. But um, you know, as far as keeping guys engaged, um, I think just having uh, a, a team that is consistently winning helps a lot. Honestly, just where you feel like you're just contributing in some way, shape, or form, and it could be something small, whether it be a freshman that's keeping track of the grit plays in the dugout, or it's somebody that's keeping the, the, the chart. Uh, the the opponent's pitching chart in the dugout, helping the team out. It could be pitchers that are just picking up on stuff that uh, could help the hitters. You know, maybe it's a tell, maybe it's a, you know something that they're just seeing from the pitcher. So uh, again, you you have a good culture of team play um, that breeds itself, and and the guys that aren't necessarily playing still feel like they're part of it. You mentioned Ethan, and I'm, that was one of the guys I wanted to talk about. Have you been pleased with how the guys have responded when they've gotten opportunities like that, like Ethan got uh, this last weekend? For sure, and and he earned that opportunity. Like I said, there wasn't it wasn't just a well, we'll we'll go ahead and give this to him right here because he he earned that spot. I mean, and you can ask anybody on our team, you know, his demeanor the last two and a half weeks on the mound when he's done the live stuff has has flipped. It's been a one eighty where he's trusting what he's doing and. You know, he's left-hander that can run the ball up to 92 miles an hour with a pretty good breaking ball and changeup. So, um, <clears throat> you know, with him, it was just a matter of trusting his stuff and his ability. When he was able to flip that switch in practice, it was like, okay, we'll, we'll give you an opportunity in the game. And it was good to see he walked the first guy on a 3-2 count, kind of lost him, and maybe in the past it would be, you know, a rough outing for him. But he was able to just use that, what he had kind of learned and his, his ability to change his mental mindset to to get through that inning and, and look good doing it. Cole Peterson. Hey, well, uh, I guess kind of same topic, but what are just your overall thoughts on the bullpen? And then more specifically, uh, Jake coming around the bullpen, what, what kind of energy and dynamic has he brought in? Obviously, he was a starter through the first couple of weeks. What has he brought into the bullpen this season? Yeah, I think our bullpen, um, we're starting to settle into some a little bit more defined roles at times. Um, but Jake in particular has given us a, a pretty good jolt of, of energy, as you said, just in the back part of the game. I mean, he's not scared. He's not going to be timid. Um, he's coming at you with 93, 94 from the left side. It's already a tough fastball to hit because he hides it. Um, <clears throat> and just gets a lot of swing and miss. And he just he's been in some big spots. And he's just very competitive. Um, again, it just goes back to to not being scared, timid, nervous, um, any of those things. I mean, he's just in straight compete mode when he comes out there. So he's given us, you know, you feel like if the starter can give you um, a quality start and then you hand the ball off to some of those guys out of the bullpen. I mean, Cam Wynn has done a nice job coming out and, and getting us uh, off the field in a lot of spots. I mean, he's he's a mid-90s arm with a really good slider. Then you throw in a lefty like Buns um, that's – you know, low to mid nineties. And then you've got Schwelly coming out of the pen, uh, well, not out of the pen coming, coming from shortstop uh, with mid, mid to upper nineties uh, throwing strikes. And that's the thing that all those guys have done a pretty good job of is, is attacking the strike zone. Michael Brooks. Well, a quick big picture question. What do you kind of make of the, the one-time transfer thing that passed last week and, and how do you kind of see that affecting baseball? Yeah, uh, I mean, I remember the day when that was the norm um, in college baseball, the one-time transfer. Um, again, I think it just as, as collegiate sports become more and more like a business, uh, that's just – it is what it is. It's not personal. Um, I guess, you know, you just – guys are looking for the best situation. Um, and, you know, you can take advantage of the, the transfer market um, at times to add experience to your roster. Um, but – I don't know. I don't think it's necessarily something that year in and year out that we're just going to um, – we definitely are not going to build your team around it. Uh, but it's something that, you know, we've seen it and it's helped our team this year um, with guys that have really helped um, out of the transfer portal. So, um, again, I think the things you run into um, potentially is just – you want to make sure it's done ethically um, when it comes to the transfers that you don't, you know, teams aren't tampering with other teams, players um, going through back channels, other avenues to try to say, well, you, you thinking about, you know, transferring for next year or so. Um, but again, I'm, it's, it, it is what it is, you know, in this day and age of, of athletics and it's fine. I mean, it's, it's becomes a little bit more and more like a business. And if um, guys feel like they can better their opportunities somewhere else, 
I'm sure we'll be on the receiving end of that um, at times as well. Uh, kind of going back to the bullpen conversation too. Uh, with, with Spencer, I know you guys were kind of cautious with him earlier in the year with kind of how you're using him and when. Um, at this point in the season, I mean, is, is he – you know, multiple times a weekend, multiple innings type guy now, or, or I guess, how are you kind of approaching uh, his use um, as you kind of get later in the season now? Well, we've, we've, we have used him a couple times now, twice on the weekend. Um, and we've used him now multiple inning saves, I guess, probably that was Sunday was his at least his second. Well, maybe not even a save situation necessarily for the others, but I think he's thrown two innings or more now, uh, maybe three times. Um, so uh, I would have been willing to go to him in the seventh inning on on Sunday if that's where the save was. Um, and he hadn't he hadn't thrown yet on the weekend, so he was still fresh. Uh, honestly, um, he wants the ball in his hand uh, with us a chance to win the game. Uh, our team does. Uh, we feel super confident with him on the mound that um, that he's going to get the job done, and there's zero doubt in anybody's mind that that's going to happen. So I guess to answer your question, um, as long as he fills up to it, we'd be willing to give him the ball as much as we can on the weekend. So if, if that's three days in a row for short stints, you know, that's what it is. If it's, if it's two days of, um, you know, one inning at a time, that's what it is. But Again, I, I think if you look, you start to look, you get more and more information about his outings. He doesn't throw a lot of pitches. I mean, he's he's on attack and he, he throws strikes. So his two inning save, he threw 20 pitches and 17 strikes. That's just pretty much unheard of when it comes to college closers. So, I mean, a 40 pitch save could potentially be three and a half, three innings. You know, I mean, it just. He's building his arm strength up. I know he has bounced back better and better each week and feeling better and better each week after he pitches. So, um, again, he wants to win, and, and he's going to take the ball and more often than not to give us a chance to win. All right, last one for Coach Bolt, Evan Bland. Well, I'll just ask you about uh, Michigan State. What stands out about them and what uh, challenge is ahead for this weekend? Uh, I would say team speed uh, stands out with them. Uh, they're they're not necessarily a team that's going to uh, hit a lot of home runs. They do hit a lot of doubles, uh, but a lot of guys that can run. They're left-handed at the plate. Um, guys, I mean, we're talking getting down the line with pretty plus speed, um, and they put the ball in play. So it's going to be a challenge for us defensively to make sure that we're on our toes um, and, and that we're ready to, to, to field the ball and, and play catch at a high level. Um, they're going to bunt at times and try to create some offense and, and run the bases well. Um, and they got a good catcher. And they hold runners well. Uh, you know, probably not going to be a lot of free bases that way. You know, stuff that you may not think about when it's maybe not be an error that shows up, but it's a, it's a wild pitch that like gives you an extra base. They, they haven't done a lot of that. Their catcher has been very good at keeping balls in front of him. He's, like I said, he's thrown guys out on the bases. They're, they're, they do a good job on the mound of controlling the running game. So that's something that we like to do. Um, we're not going to change our game, but you know we also need to make sure that we're ready to cash in on some of those opportunities where um, you know runner third, less than two outs, you don't have to have a hit. Just put the ball in play. And um, you know they're they're pretty young offensively, um, and they've played you know a, a variety of different guys, but they've got got a couple of veterans on the mound um, that have been really good they've got a couple of freshmen that they've thrown in there so um, again I I say it every week um, but we just we got to play well if we want to win I mean we've we've last weekend was a I mean you true testament to that I mean we're in the eighth inning losing on Friday that series can look totally different if you don't find a way to win that game you know we grab that momentum late in that game carries into the next day you look up and you got to sweep. So we've just got to we've got to play well. We've got to come out ready to compete uh, at a high level on Friday, and then just go from there. Okay, that's it for Coach Bolt. Got Jackson Hallmark here. Just a second.